Black Dragon and welcome to my YouTube channel, Black Dragon Biker TV. And as always, we thank you all for tuning in. So, this is, um, I'm uh, working to get my new schedule. What's up, Nebraska? What's up, uh, Timothy? Talent? Big John, MGA. I'm in the truck. Yes, I am. Uh, Terry Walker. Robert Court. Evil. What's up? So, uh, I want to do a little something different. Um, I want to um, do something where you guys can ask me questions. And, um, I'm either gonna I'm gonna do that on Saturdays I believe. Uh, good to see you there. So if I can pull up my um, back, try to pull up my try to pull up my uh, if I can pull up my channel live here and then I can see your questions as you ask me. Oh, here it is. Oh wow, did I play a commercial when I come on? That's cool. Make sure you watch the commercial. Oh wow. So I'm half a second. Oh wow. I'm half a second behind. That's crazy. So, we're going to start answering your questions. We got uh, Merlin, and Merlin is, uh, as you guys know, what's wrong with the dog? Merlin is um, our um, executive producer and his wife, Mama Rowe. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to take questions here for maybe about 15 minutes or so. So, uh, I see that we have everybody on here, and let's see, the first question... Uh, we got, oh my gosh, LA's Defiant Ones is on here. What a special, uh, that's, that's really special. That, that, wow. Uh, man, I kind of grew up in that clubhouse, um, in San Diego just all those years ago. It's such a pleasure to have the LA Defiant Ones on here. Um, who wears a hat inside of a truck? Who doesn't? That was the first question. Okay, dear Black Dragon, I've been trying to thank you. Can you please give me one second? I can, Mr. Perfect. What do you want to thank me for? I got a second here for you. Uh, so I'm looking at you guys on my uh, all these questions on my uh, tablet. How long was I in the Navy? Uh, Twelve and a half, thirteen years, something like that. Um, it's been a while Jose Gilbert says it's been a while Dragon, we need to catch up it has been a while Jose uh, 
Let's see. I think you got all you did from Fort Worth. Thank you, I guess, for all you did from Fort Worth. You're welcome, P8. Uh, it's good to see you, P8. Um, let's see. If a biker club wanted to move through another club's territory, would they need to cover their patches? In some circumstances, yes, but you don't have to do that if you uh, take the steps before you're going through another uh, MC's territory to just uh, give them a courtesy call and let them know you'll be coming through uh, or you'll be staying in their area for a while. As a matter of fact, that's good MC protocol to follow and keeps you out of situations where you might have to remove your patch. So, like, let's say you were going to go from, from Atlanta to San Diego. Any place that you don't have a chapter and you're not really, you don't have a blessing to be there and you don't have allied clubs there, then uh, you could call through to those areas, uh, to the COC or the Dominant or whatever in that area and let them know you're passing through and, and you wouldn't have any issues where you would have to take your patches off in uh, some other motorcycle clubs area. Now, if you're on the highway and you're passing through, you really don't... Uh, get uh, uh, hassled a lot, but when you get into town uh, you can, and you're riding around or you want to be someplace for a week or two, that can really uh, cause you some trouble. Uh, Kenneth Burns said, Squid's rule, 10 years, and you say you should have stayed in. I wonder about that myself. Um, shout out to Braveheart. It's so nice to see all you folks on here. We're just shooting the crap. We don't have any particular agenda. Uh, why did you choose the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club to prospect for? You know, that's really kind of funny. Uh, I chose the Black Sabbath because it was the very first motorcycle club I ever encountered or ever ran into. And, uh, you know, if I were to tell the story about how I got started in the Black Sabbath, um, it, it, it's, a, it's kind of a long story, but I, I got in trouble in the Navy. And... Uh, it was uh, kind of a, a racial thing where a, uh, 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 I was young and really uh, <laughs> full of it. And uh, a white senior chief asked me to clean the heads when I was just an E5, or when I was an E5. And I didn't think that uh, E5 should have to clean the heads. So I told him I wasn't going to do it. And my best friend Keith told him, he wasn't going to do it, and in the Navy, you're not allowed to tell a senior uh, non-commissioned officer to go uh, to go screw off. And so he had every right to destroy my career, but uh, he saw these two young black kids that were really kind of wayward, and instead of destroying my career, he sent me over to the senior chief, a black senior chief friend of his, and. Uh, when we got over there in that office, that senior chief proceeded to beat me up <laughs> and my friend and uh, then made us go back and clean the heads. And it just so happened that that senior chief was a president of the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club. And he, uh, he, I saw him later and he was getting on a motorcycle and I said, you know, what the hell do you know about motorcycles? And he said, what do you know about motorcycles? And I said, well, I ride. So he gave me his address, uh, gave me an address, and said, well, meet me here at 3 this afternoon, 3 in the afternoon. I got over there, and it was the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club. And when I walked in that clubhouse door, it was my first experience ever with a motorcycle club, except, you know, I'd seen Hell's Angels on TV, and, you know, uh, uh, um, I had seen uh, um, the... Uh, other kinds of motorcycles on television, you know, and uh, like the Mongols and stuff like that. But I'd never really seen a motorcycle up close, so a motorcycle club up close. So when I got to the Black Sabbath, I walked in those clubhouse doors and I just knew I was home. And that's the reason uh, I never tried any other motorcycle club or tried to prospect for any other motorcycle club. And um, that's the reason that it happened. Uh, Merlin says, Hi, Lady Dragon. Uh, somebody said shout out to Braveheart. Uh, Terry Walker said what's up to you? Uh, Evil said hi Black Dragon's Lady. 
uh, so they know who you are. But, uh, oh, he told me to behave when I was showing you. Let's see, uh, this thing is lacking back. My guess, Black Dragon, uh, uh, my question, Black Dragon, how the hell have you been? It's been a while. Much love from Michigan. I've been excellent, and it's great to see you. Um, I'm kind of reading this off my tab. I should look kind of more into the television screen. Uh, hello from Nanaimo, Vancouver. Oh, wow. I spent a lot of time in Nanaimo when I was in the Navy. Uh, there was a uh, Bangor, Washington was the... Um, the base there, the Navy base, and uh, somebody, and 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 so it was uh, really a great time uh, in the Nimo. So it's good to have you guys up in Canada. Spent some time in Victoria. Somebody said, "What is uh, Braveheart's whole name?" And I haven't finished giving Braveheart his whole name yet. You know, the dog kind of deserves the name. Like my last dog's name was Hope Magna Charity Marga, uh, Hope Magna Charity Warrig, Almighty Dog of Dogs of Benevolent, Great Magnificent Conqueror, the Lionhearted Bunch the First, Conquering Dog of the Tribe of Judah, Elect of God was her name. And so Braveheart's name so far is Braveheart the Magnificent Conquering Warrior, but I don't have the whole name. What are you laughing at? I don't have the whole name down yet. Don't be laughing at Braveheart's name. Uh uh. Let's see. Black Dragon, you took the time via email to introduce me to Black Ice. Oh, I did. You're definitely, uh, you know, it was my pleasure to do that. Uh, I hope that that's that's working out well for you. Uh, and you haven't let me know how that's going, but I hope that's working out well for you. Um, let's see. Uh... No, you're absolutely right, Doug Renshaw. No second-class petty officer should have to clean the heads. Oh, <laughs> you are absolutely right. And, you know, funny how the story goes. I never, uh, so what the senior chief did was he, he arranged the situation where we walked into the heads, we stayed in there for 20 minutes, and we came out and said they were clean. We never actually had to clean them because he pointed out as well that the senior chief knew he was wrong, but that's how it was. Uh, Mr. Perfect says, now I am a prospect. Excellent. A prospect for the 36 nation. That's all right, buddy. And uh, no, it's not thanks to me. Uh, all I did was made an introduction for you to become a prospect that they, the brothers had to believe in you. So um, uh, congratulations. And I, I know you're going to pull through and, uh, make an excellent member and we have a new big brother over there in the 36th i'm sure that's going to happen and uh i just can't wait for it and let me know when you cross over so we can come down and hang out are you in the columbus chapter or, or are you in the atlanta chapter prospect white boy that's all right man uh that's all right mr perfect the first time I saw the Hells Angels was while I was in a Black Oak Casino in Sonora. Uh, what was the driver or inspiration for you to write the Prospects Bible? So the Prospects Bible came because I was losing too many members out of the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. They would come in uh, and they'd get mad at us or me or something and they'd go somewhere else and uh, I saw a lot of club hopping around, and I had so many folks that would tell me, oh, you can't run motorcycle clubs like you used to, and all this kind of stuff. And it dawned on me that perhaps there wasn't a good training modality. And I truly wrote Prospects Bible originally for the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club. And I had no idea that it would take off like it has, that it's been a bestseller all this time that people all over the entire world have purchased it. I didn't know at that time that there were motorcycle clubs all over the world. I didn't know that they all operated fairly similarly. And um, these are all things I learned after Prospects Bible and after the YouTube channel and that sort of thing. Uh, so um, that was the impetus behind the Prospects Bible. Uh, let's see. Merlin says, uh, 
congratulations, Mr. Perfect. Uh, well, Mr. Perfect, we're definitely happy for you. Let's see, what else here? When are you going to get a chapter here in Ohio? We are always trying to open up new chapters, so whenever we find seven uh, in an area, that's when we move. So the answer to that question is when we get seven there, then that's when we're going to open up a chapter there. What is your take on females being a president of a co-ed MC? What is my take on females being a president of a co-ed MC? Hmm? I don't know why, but it's just not a good idea for you. Which, that's what you think. You think <laughs> it's not a good idea? I think it's possible, but I don't think, in your opinion, I don't think you feel a woman is capable of running a co-ed club. Am I right or wrong? You, you don't know me. Oh, I know you. You don't know me. I know you very well. Um, I've actually known a female president of a co-ed MC. Uh, she wound up having to join the Black Sabbath uh, as a Black Sabbath sister of the cross. Um, I think it's going to happen. Uh, I think it can happen. I think you're going to see women doing more things. Um, my my motorcycle club isn't uh, set up that way, but um, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Hell, Joan of Arc was a a, a woman who did incredible things, um, but I, if you're trying to deal and open up chapters, I mean, I think you could have a woman as a co-ed president of a chapter of or of a motorcycle club, but if it was a national motorcycle club. Uh, it would be almost impossible to open chapters because you're going to have to deal with 1% uh, Motorcycle Club nations that aren't going to be accepting of that. So, uh, um, Mr. Uh, Checkerman gives a friendly wave to the lady. I'm, I'm tired of you getting friendly waves. That's it. No more <laughs> you on the camera. Uh, no, I'm not like I'm not a hater like that. Let's see. Uh... So I hope that answered your question, D R. I I think that I think that if women want to uh, move higher in the MC world, you got to do what MC folks do, which is what a lot of y'all are doing, and that is you got to ride your bike, you got to outride the men, you got to be there to be counted, and your opportunities to grow will expose themselves. And when you get those opportunities, you got to take them. But it's just like any other thing that's been set up in society. It's going to be hard. There's going to be haters. But hell, women are riding submarines. And in my day, a woman would never get her ass on a submarine. It wouldn't happen. And women now are riding su submarines and maybe one day we'll be commanding them. So uh, work hard and everything is open to you. Uh, Somebody, Mr. Perfect, it took me three and a half years to get with the 36. Well, yeah. Uh, all things that are worth something are worth uh, taking the time, whatever it takes to get in. Not really a motorcycle club question here, but I was wondering what you would recommend as a starter bike for a six foot three inch, 320 pound man. Uh, a Shadow 1100 would be a good starter bike for you. Uh, you will grow out of that bike fast, but it's, it's, a, it's a bike you can grow out of. Um, yeah, a Shadow 1100. No, no super bikes. I don't, no one should start on a super bike. A Hayabusa 1300 shouldn't be anybody's first bike. I've buried too many friends that that was their first bike. So I would say a really big crew. Oh, an Intruder 1500. It's old. It'll carry you and uh, it'll carry your weight and it's a good bike to learn on. They're not very expensive. You can crash it up a little bit and then uh, still sell it and get good money off of it. Also a uh, Valkyrie uh, 1500. 
those are all good bikes for you to start out on. Hello from Syracuse. How's the President's Bible coming along? So I, the President's Bible was kind of a screw up for me because I took on a uh, my first publisher, and uh, when I got my house fire, the um, book got behind, and so I kind of rushed it and finished it, and now the publisher has put me through five rewrites, and uh, uh, every time I think I've got it done, uh, here we go with another rewrite. So. This is, uh, this will be, I'll be publishing my own books from now on. Uh, but I, I, I'm not unhappy with it. Um, it's just taken a lot longer than I, you know, when you're dealing with someone else, uh, you got to deal with uh, their rules. So um, it's just like everything else. Uh, it'll come up to the standard and that they want and then, then it'll come out. It's just late as hell. Um... Hey, Black Dragon, watching your videos inspired me to get my first motorcycle, a Honda Rebel 500. That's really cool. That's a good first bike, too. Yeah, hard to screw that up. Okay, let's see. Um, do you have a MC in Pittsburgh, Georgia? Do you MC in Pittsburgh, Georgia? I'm not sure. you got to ask me that question again. I'm not sure what you're asking me. Uh... I met a whole bunch of your brothers in Columbus during, uh, yeah, uh, everybody was down there but me, Mr. Perfect, and uh, that didn't, I wish I had been there for you guys. What's it like being a member of a club? To me, being a member of a motorcycle club is one of the greatest accomplishments I have ever achieved in my life. Uh, it's not always fun. There have been a lot of uh, hard times, but for the most part, uh, it's one of the greatest things in the world to fill that brotherhood. Uh, Mr. Perfect, they didn't pass anything to me from you, dirtbags. Uh, Mr. Checkman, I once saw a Hells Angel walking along, looking at a, a little like a bear in build and muscles. Okay. Rob Wilson, I had a quick reminder that Sometimes it's better to keep your mouth shut on social media. Opened my mouth up to a patch and had to backpedal trying to defend a friend, but we talked civilly. <laughs> uh, so cyber banging is always tough, and I try not to cyber bang. I try not to get into it cyber banging, uh, but it does happen, and every now and then you got to kind of uh, eat your words. Veterans Bikers MC waving... At you, good stuff you're doing here, Black Dragon. Loving your books, waiting on that President's Bible. Thank you, Veterans Bikers MC. Uh, God bless you and thank you for your service. Uh, let's see, what happened to the P of San Diego BMC years ago? He was shot near Clubhouse. Uh, no, that was the same Black Sabbath. Uh, we had a president shot on our doorstep right on damn near right in the front door and uh, um, so yeah that was the same Black Sabbath and of course um, all the what's and wherefores and all that are club business that we don't talk about but we did get a brother murdered he was a president uh, his name was Wild Dog and rest in peace and we and we love him and remember him forever uh, Let's see. How's the dieting going? My dieting is going good. I'm working out steadily, walking about, uh, you know, I got knee problems and stuff like that, but I am still trying to walk every day, but mostly it's the diet. We're working hard on the diet. And most people say they see it in my face, and so that's the first place to go. But I wish it would come off my gut. That would be nice. So, uh, Merlin said a Honda Shadow 750 is what you were thinking. No, a, a 750 is too small for a man that weighs 300 pounds. Uh, Black Sabbath, any plans of New York City? Uh, yeah, we always have plans in new places, and we're trying to get seven everywhere we are. 
is there a rank in Black Sabbath higher than national president? No, not a rank. Um, but the father is um, the father is always going to be heard and listened to. And to me, the father is the highest rank in the Black Sabbath. He is the founding father and it doesn't matter what your rank is. If he speaks, you just do what the hell he says. So that's kind of how that goes. Hello, Lady Ironhead and Ironhead. I'm great. Uh, you need to publish books for all the MC world. I thought that's what I was doing. Uh, let's see. Solar Rider said, do you think people should start on a smaller bike first? Uh, I think go big or go home. I've married, I, I've buried too many go big or go home people. I think you should start on the smallest, a smaller bike first. You see, the reason I think that is because we all started on small bikes. I mean, I started on a Honda Trail 50. So the fastest bike in the world when I was on that Honda Trail 50 was like a Honda 400 or something. Uh, and those guys were riding these choppers around. They were like 400s. Um, so we grew up, by the time I was 18, we saw like the first KZ-1000s and stuff like that. That stuff didn't exist before then, really. So um, we were able to step up in our bikes. And by the time these super bikes came out, we, uh, we were well experienced with falling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, when you we, we start out on dirt bikes when you start out on a street bike it's not how fast you can ride it's not how fast it's not if you can help hold it up it's that you just don't have the practice on getting out of the way we had one girl in the uh, black sabbath sisters of the cross that was riding her boyfriend taught her how to ride and she's riding she's doing a great job she had this big old harley davidson 1200 or 1800 whatever harley davidson things are 103 or something like that and uh a truck, a logging truck, dropped the logs off the back. And it wasn't that she couldn't ride. She just had no experience with darting, dodging, following, falling, counter steering, all those things you need to know to get out of the way of a bunch of logs rolling down the road. And she almost died, whereas other people with experience would, would have um, uh, gotten out of the way. So you need a smaller bike, and you need to be off of the major roadways to learn how to ride. No, not to learn how to ride, but to learn how to do all the things that you need to do. Hey, hey, hey. There are people watching. What? Yeah, I want you to kiss me right here. Come here. Can I get kissed right here? Can I get kissed right here? You know better than that. Uh, you spoiled all my kissing on the right side tonight. Thank you. Um... Let's see. Are there any plans for coming to South Carolina? We have a, a chapter in South Carolina. So, yes, I will be there in South Carolina on the 27th for our Beaufort, South Carolina uh, annual. Um, and uh, many uh, of the chapters in the Black South Motorcycle Club Nation will be there. So, uh, if you're there on the 27th, uh, Buford, South Carolina, we will be having our first annual, the Buford chapter, and we would love for you guys to come and visit with us. So, yes, I do have plans to be in South Carolina. Hey, get out of my camera. Uh, let's see. It's coming in here. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, someone asked me. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Shout out from Honolulu, Most Wanted MC. Hey, Most Wanted MC, it's good to see you. Shout out to you guys. Uh, what years did you serve in the Navy? Uh, I served from 1980 
1995, I think it was. Let's see. Can you can you get out of the can you get out of the camera, please? Uh so sorry for your relations loss of president brother. Thank you very much, Mr. Perfect. If a patch holder steals your bike, should you testify in court? And I am a former member. Did you really ask me that? Uh hmm. You should kick his ass and get your bike back. Uh, but um, I didn't mean to curse on my channel. Um, gee, I don't know. That's that's a tough one. There's so much in that. I, I, there's so much I don't know. Uh, how did a patch holder get your bike to steal it in the first place? So um, the MC uh, should be able to handle a patch brother stealing your bike by the president telling him to give you your damn bike back. And um, if that's not going on, then you probably have a whole bunch of issues that that are more than a question like this could answer. Uh, so um, I just don't know enough to make a, an educated answer on that. Um, but if you steal something from me, you can best believe if you stole my motorcycle, I would do everything within my powers to get it. And nothing would be off the table. Somebody asked something about side rockers. If a woman is a patch holder, then yes, some side rockers represent Somebody asked something about side rockers. I don't see it anymore. What's the purpose of wearing a side rocker? Is it appropriate for a female to wear one? Uh, yeah, uh, Merlin answered it right. Um, if you're a patch holder, then you can wear whatever the um, uniform is. If it includes side rockers, you can have those too. Side rockers mean different things for different motorcycle clubs. Thank you, uh, Merlin, for backing me up on that. I started on a trail 50 at 7 and at 14 my license I fixed up a 1970 Honda CL 100 yeah that's that's what I'm talking about Kevin um, is there an MC you know that someone like me could fit in I'm a truck driver who spends almost all of my time over the road I can always be solo but I really appreciate the idea of a brotherhood there's a lot of MCs out there that can take you uh, there is a minimum standard of operation, min minimum standard of participation, and you need to be able to meet that minimum standard of participation. And uh, if you're just up front with the motorcycle club and tell them uh, what you are about and how you ride um, and, and how much time you have, then they will let you know if that will be a good fit for them. But uh, look at a club you like, approach them, and uh, tell them wh what your situation is. What are the duties, if any, of a founder of an MC, and does being a founder have final say-so over the president? Woo! So I made a, a few videos about founders. Can a founder steal the club? Can a founder take the name? Does the founder outweigh the president? And uh, what? Uh, one of my videos is called, What is the Founder Owed? Basically... And it's tough because when you found a motorcycle club, and I have founded many chapters inside my motorcycle club, they're your babies, and you feel like you own them, and these are grown folks who own themselves. So even I felt the sting of losing power that I felt was due me. And no power is due you because you're the founder after you do your thing and you do all your founding and you set up the nation and you make it go coast to coast and you do all those things, it's still not your club in the end. It's their club. It's our club. It's about we, not about me. It's about them, not about I. 
So you got to sit down. You got to sit your butt down when you're not the president anymore and do what the president says, whether you're the founder, the father, the uh, creator, the inventor, the, the maker upper of, you still got to follow what the president says. Somebody asked me a question, is there a position higher than national president? No, that's the boss. That's the boss. Now, he may take orders or direction or uh, he may take uh, inf help from any source. He, but he's the guy whose name is on the title and he's the guy that's got to make um, uh, he's the guy that's got to make a uh, a uh, a call. Uh, you're wrong, sir. We're not in the same club. I'm out good. I don't want to testify, but now the courts are treating me uh, like something if I don't. Well, if you get a court order to go to court, uh, oh, someone says the courts can't force anyone to testify. They're bluffing. That's not true. A court can force you to testify or put your butt in jail. Uh, asked uh, McDougal, what was her name? Karen McDougal? Susan McDougal? She went to jail for a long time because she refused to testify. It's called obstruction of justice or it's called contempt of court. No chapters in Illinois. No, not yet. Someone says, just wondering why you're sitting in your cage. I always get those guys that do that. Um, why am I sitting in my cage? Because I couldn't do this from the back of a motorcycle while holding this and having all this set up and holding an, and uh, conducting an interview. If you can, start your channel and we'll watch you do your uh, sessions riding your motorcycle doing this. And I'll be the first one. I promise you, I will subscribe. And I'll watch you every time. And I will never ask you why you're on your motorcycle breaking the law and doing all this. Okay. Why am I not on my motorcycle? Because I'm not riding tonight. If you think you can outride me anywhere during any type of season, any type of rain, weather, whatever, if you think you can do that, Black Dragon at BlackSabbathMC.com, we'll get together and I'll ride your ass into the dirt. Really? I shouldn't have done that. No, why waste your time? I mean, that was uh, all that could have been directed to something positive or something else. But why would you waste your time on someone like that? Like, I mean, he's watching you, so you're getting paid. He's a subscriber. He's putting money in your pocket. Thank you, because we like money. I don't know if he's putting any money in my pocket, but... Well, he's a subscriber. Every I like that. He he's putting <laughs> thank money you. in your pocket, so we need to thank you. We need thank to thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, let's see. I take that back. Give me my email back. I, <laughs> right? I'm taking that back. You put it out there in the universe. <laughs> I put it out there. Just, it's too late. Just. Uh, wow. Somebody from Gangs, uh, Guangzhou, China. How do you say Guangzhou? Guang, <laughs> Guangzhou. 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 Guangzhou, China. Uh, Shay Shay. Thank you for um, thank you for tuning in, War Pain MC. No, that's not War. Who is this? Zhangzhou Chan. It already disappeared. Wow, that was fast. Um, where did the China thing go? But anyway, thank you so much for tuning in from China. 
uh that is so cool to have someone do you, i i would love to know about you guys motorcycle clubs in china uh, that would just be so interesting to know about that maybe even i'll come around there and interview some of you guys so uh hit me up from china black dragon at black sabbath mc.com i would love to talk to you about about china kenneth says trolls be trolling <laughs> harley rider 66 said not a troll sorry uh <laughs> Yeah, don't call Harley Rider 66 names. She said it's not worth it, and, and we have to do what she says. Uh, someone says, no, they won't force him to testify. This isn't a case which is mainstream media attention, probably. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, Warpaint MC, that's right. That's who that is. Uh, why don't you have a chapter in Wisconsin? Because I don't have seven brothers there that want to ride, but it's coming uh, uh, but we want a chapter there believe me we want a chapter everywhere uh, Charles Power said you were a smart lady Aww. Uh, how is your weekend going so far haters st uh, no Harley Ryder said he's not a hater so we're not gonna do that to him this is uh, this is the key just ignore them and take the high road uh, didn't Eric Holder said when they go low, we kick them? <laughs> I was just thought that was appropriate there. Just kidding. Uh, oh, one of my um, uh, bit streamer, one of my um, Patreon folks. What is the best way to go about starting a chapter of an existing MC in your area? Uh, you did. Uh, didn't you send me that? I saw that, and I have a whole series of videos starting next week how to start a motorcycle club that's a whole series of these videos and we're gonna go through this one step at a time uh, thank you mr. Kenneth Burns for your donation sir Whoa! dang I almost broke my new thing thank you sir for your uh, donation we appreciate that uh, Helen Wortham says, you got nurses. You got the nurses watching you now. What nurses? There's nurses watching me? Uh, hi, nurses. I mean, I don't mean hi, nurses. Helene, stop. Did I say hi, nurse? I didn't. I got carried the away. I'm so, can watch. I, I'm so, so they sorry. Can watch. Everybody can learn. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not having a good evening, says Harley Rider 66. We want you to have a good evening, Harley at Rider 66. And I'm thankful that in your great evening, you are taking time to watch me. I am very, very thankful. I want to say thank you to you. Um, let's see. Yeah, a club that already exists. So, you know, basically, you're going to gather up seven guys in that area. You keep that to yourself. The last thing anybody wants to see is a new motorcycle club in their area. You're going to train your seven guys. You're going to get them prepared. You're going to get them set up. You're going to get them knowledgeable of what it takes to be part of your MC. Then you're going to send your senior guys over to that area to contact the uh, COC in that area or whoever the dominant body is and you're going to begin your negotiations for getting into that area. That's the long and short of it. Uh, but you don't want to go in there making a whole bunch of noise and we're coming and coming soon and all that old kind of stuff because you're just going to run into opposition and get shut down before you even get started. Okay, so I think we've done quite a bit here um i'm gonna do this on saturdays and um bit streamer says why why what what did i miss he says why uh helene says nurses ride hell yes yes they do uh helene says hi to you oh and uh, I told the state's attorney I'll only answer two questions. Is this your motorcycle? And did anyone have permission to have it? You might have to, uh, you might have to 
answer a few more questions than that. If you answer any questions, then you're going to answer more than two. That I can promise you. Why seven founding members? Because the Black Sabbath was started by seven. And you're absolutely right. Uh, what you're probably alluding to is it doesn't take seven people to start a chapter. It only takes five. But because the Black Sabbath Nation was started by seven, we always start our chapters with an original seven. That's why. Beyond Lockdown. Is that someone's name? Beyond Lockdown. Wow. Since, uh, since there isn't an existing MC in my area at all besides a 1% club, would you think that I should try to start one? After spending 12 years in the prison life, uh, the lifestyle of 1%ers isn't for me. Well, then, if that's the case, then yes, you should try to start one. If the surrounding clubs around your area don't meet what you need, then you should start your own. Yes, I believe you should. Fat so in what in that way in what way fat so in what way are we talking are we calling people names now? Uh, Gino says it's uh, awesome chatting with you. It's been awesome chatting with you as well. Prospect White Boy uh, from the thirty six. You're is out. God bless. It's nice to talk to you. Uh, and it looks like for me, that's probably long enough. Um, I've had such a good time with you guys tonight. This was my first one of these. Um, oh, Fatso is somebody's name. I see that now. It's been a good time with you guys, uh, having you here on my, uh, on my, uh, uh iPad and, and hanging out with you guys and talking with you guys. It's really been kind of cool. Um... I want to do this, uh, I probably will do this on Saturdays, and it'll probably be Saturday morning. I was just waiting for someone to get here, and I thought, well, this would be a good time to try this out, and holy moly, I didn't expect that we would have 75 people on this thing. Um, Matthew says, thank you for your channel and the way you speak. It's hard to find eloquent speakers that are knowledgeable in the ways of the MC. Well, thank you very much for such a wonderful compliment. Um, James Jones said he just finished my book, Prospects Bible, which is very uh, exciting to, uh, to to know that people buy my book. I, I tell you, I'm just so thankful, but the fact that people buy my book and actually read it and stuff, that is just amazing to me. Um, and I, I'm just, I'm very thankful and humbled. And I get a lot of flack. People, oh, you're selling books on YouTube. Well, yeah, I'm trying to sell them on anywhere I can. YouTube works. But uh, I'm very thankful. Uh, Beyond Lockdown, great content. Thank you, sir, for my $5 donation, sir. Thank you. You're going to help me buy uh, lots of equipment. We definitely appreciate it. And all this new equipment I got, by the way, came from you guys and your donations. Like this, uh, this is the top-of-the-line iPad. I got this uh, just uh, about a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is the, the iPad Pro uh, I forget it's got the most uh, gigabytes that you can get and um, this is so I can do all of my editing on the fly now in my car I can just shoot and edit it's awesome and very cool I got my new uh, uh, phones now so now my lips are synced with the uh, with the speaking so I got this phone that was uh, recommended for this work which is a uh, um, a uh, uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 9 and I bought one and got one free isn't that cool so I can shoot and everything with that one and still do all the other stuff with this one I got uh, a giga a, a terabyte of hard drive space so now I can shoot all kinds of videos I got my new uh, stabilizer from smooth uh, and I got my new backpack with all this stuff in it this all came from you guys. I got my, just this. This came from, uh, from you guys and your donations. So, uh, if if my quality is better, if you're seeing better videos, uh, if you're seeing the new 4K uh, stuff uh, that I'm shooting, uh, brand new uh, uh, speaker systems and uh, and and microphones, and I got some new editing equipment. All this stuff I got. Uh, in late August 
and this all has come from your donations uh, to my channel to bring you guys better content. So I'm very, very thankful. Very thankful indeed. Uh, Black Draven talks like an adult advice is good for life in general. I appreciate that, uh, Fatso Watt, and I hate to call you that. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate that, sir. Uh, so thank you very much, Beyond Lockdown. Uh, my old Salt Lake City brother, hope you are well. Oh my gosh, that's right. What's up, man? Uh, so those of you who know me know I was in submarines in Salt Lake City. SSN 716 was my first submarine. Oh my gosh, back in 1984 or something. And uh, uh, Robert Court was on that submarine with me. And it's so cool to uh, talk to my brothers and see them. And everybody I know from the submarine force has turned out to be such a great person. Uh, they've all done well in life, and it's just really cool to see these guys uh, and see what they've become uh, in life. And I'm just so proud to have served with you guys, man. Um, and when I'm reading from this thing, that's when you see my finger sliding up and down, which is kind of a, uh, it's kind of a, I like to use this so my finger doesn't slide up. And, uh, Sons of Silence are the only ones that are near me besides some vet clubs. If there are any other MCs around, I haven't met them. Uh, so yeah, you know, yeah. If you if it doesn't work for you, yes, definitely start a uh, uh, definitely start start your chapter, but do it by according to protocol. Uh, we are getting skitty here. Someone says we do appreciate your video. Says War Paint. We have directed some people who wanted to prospect and hang around to your videos. They are valuable in China, no less. Holy moly. Uh, okay, so I've caught up to everybody. Caught up to everybody's uh, questions. And they're still coming in. Wow, that's something else. Let's see. I will wear it well. 6'8", 350 pounds. Holy moly, that guy's a monster. Uh... That's awesome. You were in subs. My dad was a World War II sub vet. I'm very partial to the World War II vets. Not many left. And so let me tell you something about World War II submarine vets. They were a special group because they were riding in motor in, in submarines that uh, the um, the the torpedoes didn't work. There was a long time in the World War II era. Uh, where the torpedoes weren't working. As a matter of fact, they thought they were so bad that um, uh, that they thought that there was someone that was actually sabotaging the torpedoes. They, a, a, a submarine would be riding down the uh, road. They would see a destroyer or something. They'd pop up and shoot it and watch the torpedoes just bang down the side. Bang, 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 and, and not explode. And uh, so those guys were, they, they were just monsters. They... They were hellacious um, people uh, and certainly uh, warriors of the highest level. So we're very thankful to have those World War II submariners. Well, listen, I thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, like the video and share the video and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. My books, Prospects Bible, Prospects Bible for Women's Motorcycle Clubs, the Public Relations Officer's Bible, and the Sergeant at Arms Bible are all available on Amazon and Kindle, and you can also get them out of bookstores if you go order them there. We certainly appreciate you for tuning in uh, from all over the world. We're thankful to have you from China to Timbuktu to Oklahoma City to Alaska to Brazil. We just certainly appreciate you all. Thank you for what you've done in helping my um, um, channel become what it has become. Uh, we will see you um, tomorrow. It'll be another video tomorrow and one Monday. And uh, somebody says, we need a schedule. See, boss, we need a schedule. I will give you guys a schedule next week, and I will stick to it. Listen, that's my two cents. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a great evening, morning, afternoon, day or night, wherever you are in this world.
and get skinny.